when you're training in a swimming pool, if there is technology, if it can kind of count how fast you're swimming, all that technology works one length at a time. So it knows that you get to the end of a length and it can say, okay, you've swum 25 more metres. Um, but actually, when you're, when you're actually training, what people are really interested in, what you often get in if you're coached, is people breaking down the length into different sets, so the, the approach to the turn at the end, um, the breakout when you come out of a turn, and the bit in the middle when you're just swimming. When you're outside, you're using your smartphone to find where you are. GPS is great. It tells you exactly where you are. But then you go inside and most of the time it just doesn't work. And various people have used kind of indoor navigation technologies, which are designed to sense things about the building you're in to find out where you are without using GPS. And one of the things that they've used is um, anomalies in the Earth's magnetic field which are caused by the structure of the building you're in. Typically you think your smartphone has a compass in it, but what your smartphone actually has is called a magnetometer. What that does is that measures the magnetic field surrounding the smartphone in three axes, so an X, Y and a Z axis. And one piece of information you can get out of that is what is the direction of that vector that you get out of that, and that's actually that is the compass direction, so that gives you a compass. But as well as that, it's a vector, it has a direction, it also has a magnitude. So um, the magnitude that it gives you is, well, if you're outside, that magnitude is the magnitude of the Earth's magnetic field at that point, which stays constant for a large distance. Once you get inside, that's really affected by anything that's large and metal or any electrical equipment which is near you. So if I walk through a massive skyscraper with a big steel frame, then it's going to be putting in what a different direction possibly on the vector or a different um, magnitude or typically it won't get so it won't get so bad that the compass completely the compass direction gets completely destroyed if you're walking along a corridor in a skyscraper each time you go past an upright beam you often see a kind of big increase in the magnitude at that point looking at a swimming pool what a swimming pool is it's a big rectangular hole here 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 and here this is all reinforced concrete now reinforced concrete it's concrete with metal bars in it your swimming pool is surrounded by great big lumps of metal. All of these affect how the magnetic field is perturbed. So each time you get close to one of these lumps of metal, the um, magnitude of the magnetic field will change. And if you look at a swimming pool from the side, typically it will start at a deep end and it will go up slowly. And then at the shallow end, there will typically be a steep bit and then an almost flat shallow end. At the bottom, you've got more big lumps of metal and you were always swimming on the top, or at least we're assuming you're always swimming on the top. So here you are on the top. At the deep end, you are this far, you're quite a long way away from this metal. So this metal isn't perturbing your magnetic field too much. And at the shallow end, you're really quite close. So it's a much bigger effect. This effect is very much linear in the direction you swim in. So you swim up and down the pool. Because this height only changes along the pool, if you swim up and down the pool here, or you swim up and down the pool here, or here, the way in which it changes is pretty much the same, because you're always at this point, this point, this point, and this point, you're always this distance away, and this point, this point, and this point, you're always much closer. You can take this and you can measure the magnetic field strength. This graph here I'm pointing at, this shows the magnetic field measured along the pool I can regularly swim at. This is the shallow end, and as you go along the pool, you can see it kind of has a kind of characteristic change. This change in magnitude actually happens as you swim along the pool. And I've kind of demonstrated that the magnetic field is perturbed by the shape of a swimming pool and that the way that happens changes as you go along the pool, so as you swim up and down. How do you go from that to actually getting position of a swimmer out? It's unlikely people will, lots of people will go swimming with smartphones at the moment. But if they do want to, there is a lot of kind of commercial equipment out there for doing so. And um, so I've got the waterproof case for the smartphone here. And um, I've just got a standard sort of bag for it. And I just take that and strap it so it's on the small of my back there. That keeps it in the same place on my back and it's waterproof. I've swum for a good few hours with this and other people have swum with it. You wouldn't want to train every day with a smartphone strapped on your back, 
but if you're if you're going down to a training session it's not actually that different you can still swim fine as long as it's kind of tightly attached to you the first thing i did with this is i stuck a phone on my back recorded a load of data whilst i was just kicking on my front and lying still and that looked great and i thought okay it looked just like these graphs and i thought okay that's great i am um, yeah end of project but then when you actually swim so i've got some video here of me swimming and you can see as i swim my whole body actually rotates from side to side so it's as you um as you kind of pull you rotate your whole body twists about 50 to 60 degrees and when you look at the magnetometer readings you get something that looks like this graph here you can see here it's still got the same basic shape that i showed in the previous graph but every time i move from left to right there's a great big jump up and jump down these magnetometers have errors one of the big errors in them is that the strength that they record on each axis isn't really very accurate and the different axes are differently accurate as you rotate the magnitude is which you're making from the vector is coming from different parts of a vector so if the x is stronger than the y as you rotate to one side then the x kind of dominates and as you come back the other way it goes back down again previous work on magnetic navigation has all been indoor navigation and they're assuming that people will not move their phone they'll not you know wave their phone like this while they're walking along they're assuming that people will be walking looking at their phone like that um, in some projects they're assuming it's hanging around your neck so it's in a very constant kind of orientation the pool situation is actually surprisingly hard to collect data from what i actually did is um i've got an algorithm for fixing this which is it looks at each of the x y and z and it says what would happen if these were if this one was off by 0.5 percent for example because the key thing that we know is the real profile on this graph moves quite slow changes quite slowly in comparison to the error which is on this graph which goes up and down quite quickly so if you're trying to remove this error and you know what's causing that error so what you're looking for is a way to change the weightings of each axis so that this graph is as smooth as possible so we've built a lot of technology now and we're looking at kind of creating interactive systems that respond to how people are swimming if you're an elite swimmer you have access to an awful lot of technology which will give you in some cases it will even give you kind of feedback at the end of each length your coach can kind of see the data as to exactly how you swam on that length but for a normal swimmer there's nothing that can give you any kind of feedback and particularly if you're not coached at all being able to get some kind of real-time feedback on how your swimming is going i think that could be a real kind of complete game changer for sort of amateur swimmers guess that a runner might actually be in this video but they haven't been seen in. What we can do with this is, is basically pull out a collection of video fragments, some of which we know the runner is explicitly in because they've been seen and tagged, and some that we think they might be in. Yum yum. Did you ever see that? No, that's mine now. Let's go back into the machine again.